Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Ocarina of Fire here. So, a little bit different scenery, going to be uh, talking a lot about this guy right here, Peyton Manning, behind me. A little bit about him, his legacy, his career, and a little bit about Jim Irsay and how uh, maybe he isn't as crazy as we all thought. So, hope everyone enjoyed the Super Bowl. I mean, the game was eh, the commercials were okay, and the halftime was alright. But, at least, I uh, hope everyone got to spend the afternoon with some family and was able to enjoy themselves. But, the game itself... Peyton Manning, that Denver Broncos team, their entire team, offense, defense, special teams, coaching, they just got beaten in all aspects of the game. Seattle really did uh, put a hurting on them. And I real, don't want to say embarrassing, but, I mean, it's a shame that uh, that team put on that performance in the biggest game of the year. Peyton Manning's going to take a ton of blame, but this once again proved that no amount of good quarterback play can overcome a shaky offensive line and a mediocre defense. I mean, Seattle rushed four guys constantly all game. They weren't bringing any pressure by any linebackers or corners. They just said our four is going to be your five and sometimes six with a running back. And it, they weren't able to give Peyton Manning any time at all. And when Peyton Manning was able to get the little bit of time he had, he was able to make some good plays. But then he got to Mary's time as fumbling, just giving the ball back. And it was just tough to watch. It's a shame. But it is what it is. Congrats to the Seahawks. Defense wins championships and balance wins championships, and that's going to transition right into Jim Irsay. Back when uh, the Broncos uh, went to visit the Colts, I think week seven in October, Irsay was quoted how, you know, it was a shame to let Manning go, but he wanted to move in a different direction, focusing on balance and defense as opposed to the Star Wars stats that the Manning Colts put up throughout the 2000s. And he took a lot of heat for it, saying, oh, he didn't respect Peyton Manning. It was a shot at his old team, shot at Bill Polian and everything. But when it comes down to it, as we saw this Sunday on the Super Bowl, he was absolutely 100% right. Peyton Manning had the best numbers of his career, best quarterback season of all time, yet a great defense absolutely shut them down in all aspects of their game. So when Jim Irsay let Peyton Manning go, he had a vision of what he wanted. He wanted to make those Baltimore Raven teams, the Seattle team, the New England teams of the early 2000s, where you want the team built on defense and being able to run the ball and the quarterback play to be similar to what Russell Wilson did. Be able to make a play when it's needed, but not be forced to carry the load, because when you're forced to carry the load and you have a small hiccup, that small hiccup is catastrophic. Once Denver wasn't able to pass the ball anymore, it was done. I mean, they don't have a consistent enough running game with Moreno and Ball to continually pound away, and it was their undoing. They weren't able to get a first down until midway through the second quarter, which is just ludicrous considering they haven't gone two, three and out to start two possessions all season long. So a little bit about Jim Irsay, and, you know, I'm sure he wanted Peyton Manning to win because, you know, they're business partners, they're friends, they grew up around the game together, and... It's just, I think, in the back of his mind, says, see, this is what I did not want anymore. I mean, granted, Peyton Manning was unsure whether he was going to come back in the first place, but he wanted to go and move forward into a different direction of what he thought a championship team should be. Whether the Colts will turn into that is one thing, whether they'll get the talent to do so, but they have set the mold where they want to be able to have strong defense, stop the run, and Trent Richardson, they traded for to run the ball and have balance with Andrew Walker. That's why the Colts weren't able to advance deep in the playoffs this year. Their defense was terrible. Quite frankly, they were bad against Kansas City, where Andrew Luck had to pull a rab out of his hat to somehow win that game. And they went to New England the next week, and they were terrible again. And the quarterback wasn't able to uh, dig him out of that hole, similar to what Peyton Manning had to do throughout his career in Indianapolis. So the Colts now in their third year of a rebuild, third uh, or a retool, as they like to call. We'll see where they go and if they can emulate somewhat of what the Seahawks are doing. As to the future of the Seahawks, and honestly the rest of the NFL for that matter, the Colts, the Redskins, the um, Panthers, the 49ers, all these teams with these young quarterbacks, it's it shows that the championship window doesn't open very long because you see how with uh, Tom Brady, with Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Matt Stafford, Jay Cutler now, Joe Flacco, Tony Romo, all these quarterbacks are getting such, such big contracts that's eaten up so much of their captain, not able to uh, surround them with the good enough talent. In Seattle, they had a bunch of rookies, a bunch of young guys on entry-level contracts, and they are able to build a monster, the great team, because they had the cap room to put – uh, players in spots where they needed. You look at Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. When he went down, they 
couldn't do anything because they're so focused on around Aaron Rodgers and putting everything around him that they didn't have a backup plan. You look at Joe Flacco because Flacco got that huge contract. They had to let Bolden walk, Ellerby walk, uh, Canty walk. That is, they weren't the same team anymore because they didn't have any money to sign new guys. Sure, they got Huff and they got um, um, Doomerville, but those aren't key playmakers in the spots to help that offense thrive. You look at Dallas, they they don't have the cap. I mean, it's going to be tough when Des Bryant comes off his rookie deal and the Marcus Ware wants a new deal to re-sign these guys. You look at the Colts, you know, Andrew Luck's going to need a big contract in two years. T.Y. Hilton's going to want a new contract. Dwayne Alvin, Coley Fleener, Trent Richardson, all these guys are going to need new contracts. And where is this money going to come from? So, it's going to be interesting to see where the NFL goes in the next couple of years because with this whole salary cap situation, teams like the Seahawks aren't going to be around for too much longer because at first chance, other teams are going to come pick them apart. You know, Richard Sherman is going to command $20 million this offseason. Russell Nelson next year is going to command $15 million. And um, it's just going to be hard. There's not enough money. And you see teams put so much in the quarterback position that, sure, it wins regular season games, but how many – uh, Super Bowl has it won. You look at the quarterbacks we've won at the last couple Super Bowls. Eli Manning before he got a big contract. Joe Flacco before he got the big contract. Aaron Rodgers before he got the big contract. And all these teams after they got the contracts weren't able to uh, compete at the highest level anymore. So just something to think about, something I thought about. So, um, yeah, that's all I got for today. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Um, Peyton Manning lost. He ain't the GOAT anymore, I guess. But it is what it is. Have a great day. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and Ocarina Fire checking out. Have a good one.